YouTubers. What's up? My name's Jack Gardner. Welcome to the Cartoon Chop Shop, episode one, where we're going to dig in some Bon Jovi. So the whole premise of this new web series of lessons is that I'm going to take a cover tune, I'm going to make a backing track of it, I'm going to solo over it, try and play the craziest things I can come up with over the top. Still trying to say tasteful, shall I say. And basically, I'm going to show you what I'm doing, what I'm thinking, then we're going to analyze what's going on in the background. We'll, uh, with certain tunes, we're going to take a look at you know what you can do to enhance the comping or you know like how we can mess with the harmony. So we'll be looking at some kinds of reharmonization, um, and yeah, basically overplay or 2.0 it as we're going to call it. So if you're looking to spice up your cover tunes or you know you're getting bored of playing the same thing over and over again, maybe you just want to really annoy the other musicians that you're with and your cover band. You're in the right place, essentially. So yeah, let's dig in. So in episode one, we're looking at Bon Jovi, the classic Living on a Prayer. I was fortunate enough to go and watch these guys play at Anfield when they played Liverpool, which was bizarre, seeing as I grew up literally about a two minute walk from Anfield. Really, really strange. With uh, the great Phil X on guitar, nothing against Richie Sambora, who is a legend in his own right. Um, but yeah, Phil, what a player he is, man. Like, and my jaw was just on the floor the whole way through the gig. So yeah, first of all, we're gonna take a look at what I was kind of doing with the backing track and how I'd maybe comp this when I'm playing with the band. We're gonna dive into the harmony a little bit more than maybe it does on the original track. So yeah, let's dig in. When we look at the backing track then, and kind of what I'm playing, if we go to the original tune, Living on a Prayer, I think Richie Sambora is kind of playing power chords. They're implying other chords, obviously, because of the tonality, but we get, like, I view that as E minor, C major, D major, D major, C major, and D major. The way in which I view them, then, is to just basically harmonise them with kind of seventh chords and their upper extensions. So, if I view one shape you could use for E minor instead, that's essentially an E minor 9, we've got the ninth up on the top here. We could use a slight C major 9, where I'm actually putting the sharp 4, or sharp 11 if you want to call it that, down here at the bottom. That's a gorgeous sound chord. You could also play the high E on the top if you want, and then you get in the third. Next shape I'd probably use is D, sus4 essentially that is. If you finger it like this, you can also get that's essentially the fifth up on the top, which sounds great. For G, you could use a bog standard, this typical like rock G. But I might sometimes use this shape. Well, so all I'm doing there, that is essentially a G triad, and I'm hammering from sus2, major 2nd, whatever you want to call it, major ninth. it's the major 3rd, and then the 5th. This works really well in the example. So, let's try an example then. Another way, so it's cool. These kind of shapes sound a bit more like the likes of White Snake, you know, is this long. Hugely popular in the 80s, but they sound really nice if you can add a bit of chunk. Always, you know, keep the palm button going. That's basically the idea. Let's move on and dig into the solo and what I played basically all the notes that I played over the top of the solo. So, this first phrase in the solo is kind of like a crazy tapping idea over the chord which we're already familiar with. I 
that C major 9 with the sharp 11 or sharp 4. So what I'm kind of thinking usually over that chord type is C Lydian. What we're going to do is basically almost like an arpeggio with some extensions. So the lick basically we're going 3, 5, 7, 12 back down. From here we're going back up and then we're going to skip the string. So we're going to go over to the G string, we're going to go 4, 5, 7 up to the 12th fret. That in itself could be quite a cool kind of cycle and lick, you know? So we get... It's up to you what fingers you use to tap. I mean, I'm using the middle for that. I suppose if you wanted to, you could use the middle and the third finger. Which feels a bit more comfortable just with one for me. Naughty finger. Um, so yeah, from there, essentially... Ah, sorry. I'm going up and sliding with that first finger from the 4th fret all the way up to the 12th fret. Now the way which I'm going to view this then is I'm going to think of two pentatonic box shapes. Essentially this is pentatonic box 1 of the minor in E. And there's this shape up here. Uh, that's what that should have been. Um, and I'm basically going to use tapping on the higher kind of box shape and then it's going to be a mix of just hammer-ons from nowhere with the left hand. So, we get... So then I'm going 12, 14, tap the 19th, 12, 15 on the high E, and then tap the 22nd fret. Sorry, you've not got 22 frets on the guitar. Um, and then from that tap, while the 15th fret's still being held with the little finger, we're going to slide into the 19th fret of the high E. So the whole lick really slow we get. That's the idea. Kind of like that tapping lick. It's quite cool. So the next lick. That's pretty much the same as the one from the original. Now to link the next phrase. All I'm going to do is play this kind of almost like a sweepy line. I'm viewing it as kind of like an E minor 9 or minor 7 arpeggio. I use this lick all the time. I always seem to know when it's going to come. So, the idea is it's going to go 7th fret, 9th fret, and then 10th fret. Then we've got 9th fret on the D. And then we've got 7th fret on the G. 11th fret on the G, and slide it. So... From here, we're going to do a bit of a finger twisting move, so we're going to go with our middle finger onto the 12th fret of the B. And then we're going to go high E on the 10th fret, 12th fret, 14th fret, and then basically that's going to slide up one more. I'm not too sure about my picking pattern on this, I guess. It's a sweep, so I'm trying to only pick once on each string. Except for on the high E, I am actually also picking on that to give it that kind of snappy sound. So from once we've got up to there, that's the same as the original. And then instead of coming back down like on the original, I bend was nearly in tune, but you get the idea, I'm bending it a further tone up. That's the idea, I love those kind of licks. So, same as the original, we've got this kind of... Yeah, instead of playing this, which I think Richie Sambora plays, I'm going... Which is up on the 15th fret of the B string. That's essentially just the minor 7 in the key of E. Now I'm going to play the same lick that he plays in the original after this. Here, I'm going to expand, I'm going to move away, I'm going to do my own thing. This is actually quite hard to break down. I'll try and play the lick really slow, so it goes... <laughs> try and break that down even more. So we get, it's basically pentatonic, but I'm moving between shapes using some weird intervals. So I'm going to go... That's the last note of the phrase. From here we're going to go... So 
that's just standard blues scale stuff. From that note, we're gonna go. That's just gonna complete the bar. And so from there. So now I use my first fingers to cross over to the note A on the 12th fret, down to the 10th fret on the G. I'm gonna hybrid pick the octave back to the note, and then this is going to essentially be the 11th fret on the G. Little finger comes over onto the 12th fret of the A, 9th fret on the G, and then slide that down. And then we're going to go basically into this kind of pentatonic movement. So. From the note G down here, we're going to play this really kind of cheesy phrase, but I use it all the time as well. That kind of sound, except I'm going to put a double stop on it as well. So I'm going to go. Now, this is where the craziness begins. I'll try my best to transcribe this line. Um, yeah, it's not 100% accurate in terms of time. I mainly think of shapes with this next line. So it's very sweepy based. And um, I'm looking basically to land on the lower notes on the strong beat. So the premise of the idea is something along the lines of this. The shapes which I'm kind of thinking of, it's around this one to start with where it's three note per string. And then I'm going into a kind of E minus seven, the bottom half of this shape. I'm going like that. It should be on the transcription somewhere over there. And from there, I'm thinking of the next shape, which is essentially, it's like a D, seven, the nine on the top. That's how I'd be that. That's the idea. Then I'm moving into this shape, which is kind of like an E minor. I'm playing the ninth, and then I'm going into the fourth up here. And this is where the horrible position shift is. So that's almost like an E minor nine. And then from here with the little finger, I'm basically going chromatically from the 11th fret up to the 14th fret. And then I'm going to outline kind of like a B minor 7 shape, um, or a G major 7 if you wanted to look at it like that. So we get... From here, I'm basically going to play right the way up the G major 7 or I'd view it as a B minor that kind of arpeggio shape so we get and once we get to the top we're going to position shift it just up one fret and come back down to the 11th fret here on the G string so all in all those shapes should be like this kind of So with this next shape I'm thinking of kind of C major 7, this part of the shape. Except I'm going to go from the notes A, so it can sound like an A minor 7 as well. If you want. Or A minor 9. That's cool. What I'm going to do is actually link it to this next shape, which is again C major 7. So by doing that I'm going finger is going to slide up one fret and then the middle finger is going to come across and then we're going to go first finger, little finger on that top note there on the 19th fret and then this is just kind of like going down the pentatonic scale to the 17th on the B and then I'm going to bend 
20 <laughs> second fret, sorry again, if you don't have a 20 second fret, I apologise, but we get this, ah, sorry, so we get this kind of sound. So from the bend out of that 20 second fret, that's just like position 4 pentatonic, So the next idea is essentially like an octave based idea. I really love the sound of this, it sounds more like a synth to my ears when I hear this. So we're gonna go on the G string and the E string only, so if you know your octave chords. Same idea, I'm using hybrid picking throughout. I'm gonna basically go all the way up to what would be the 22nd on the high E, and then we've got the 19th on the G, and we're just gonna go down a holster, and then half step and back again so so the idea is from there we're just going to continue right the way through the scale so and that's where we're going to start so So that's almost the same as that lick, which we did just an octave above. So we've got... Now from here, it's kind of like that lick right at the beginning. That kind of sound. That kind of feel, you know. So next idea. It's all based around natural harmonics. We're going to start on the 7th fret of the B string, and then we're going to go to the 12th fret on the high E. And this pattern kind of works with all the string sets then, so we'll go 7 on the B, 12 on the high E, 7 on the G, 12 on the B, 7 on the D, 12 on the G, 7 on the A, 12 on the D, 7 on the E, and then we're going to finish on that 12 on the A. So. that from Eric Johnson. Yeah, works really, really well. You can use the whammy bar if you want to give some vibrato. So, so the final lick which I play is basically outlining a C kind of major arpeggio. Similar to the original solo where Richie Sambora plays it. I'm going to use a similar kind of idea. So we're going to start from the major 7 of C. Then we're going to go some root, then the third, fifth, and then we're going to play some double stops. And then I'm playing a double stop on the 14th of the D and the 14th of the G. And we're then to finish it, we're going to go 11 bent into 12 on the G, and then 12, 12 on the D and the A. And then the very final thing which I do is play that chord which we looked at before. Sound of that C major nine with the sharp eleven. It's just <laughs> so yeah, that kind of wraps it up for episode one. Bon Jovi, living on a prayer. If you guys dig this, or you want the transcription, or you want the backing track, please head over to my website, which is jack-gardener.co.uk. And yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments. I've already got episode two in the works at the minute. Yeah, if you've got any suggestions of tunes, please do get involved. If you like this, or you didn't like it, please like, comment, leave a like, or dislike if you're not into it. And um, yeah, subscribe to the channel for more. I'm going to scoot. So yeah, thanks guys for checking out the cover tune, Chop Shop. Episode 1, Bon Jovi Living on a Prayer. See you guys next time.